Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 6.2, rate of reaction. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Before we begin, a quick reminder that I'm only posting around half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube. But if you want access to the entire syllabus, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. Also, if you like the slides I use in my videos, which can be used as a teaching resource or a Vision guide, they will eventually be available to download soon after I've finished producing all the videos. Once done, I'll put a link to those in the description as well. Rate of reaction refers to the rate at which reactants are consumed or products are formed in a chemical reaction. So it's essentially a measure of how quickly a reaction occurs. Factors that affect the rate of reactions include the concentration of solutions, pressure of gases, the surface area of solids, temperature, and adding or removing a catalyst. So changing the concentration of reactants in a solution affects the rate at which particles collide. An increase in concentration leads to an increase increase in the rate of reaction. Gas molecules collide more frequently at higher pressures, so increasing the pressure of gaseous reactants leads to an increase in the rate at which they react. Increasing the surface area of a solid reactant, for example by crushing it into a powder, exposes more particles to the other reactant, leading to an increase in the rate of reaction. Increasing the temperature of the reactants gives particles more kinetic energy, leading to an increase in the rate of reaction. Finally, using a catalyst, including enzymes which are biological catalysts, also increases the rate of reaction. A catalyst can be defined as a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction and is chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. Next, you need to describe practical methods for investigating rates of reaction. So the rate of a chemical reaction can be determined by measuring the change in mass of a reactant or product, or the volume of gas produced. To measure the volume of gas produced, attach a gas syringe to a sealed flask containing the reactants and immediately start the stopwatch. Record the volume of gas in the syringe at regular time intervals, for example every 30 seconds, and when the reaction is over, plot your results on a graph. Alternatively, a delivery tube can be directed from the flask to an upside down measuring cylinder filled with water. This method is referred to as downward displacement because as gas collects in the cylinder, an equal volume of water is displaced. Record the volume of gas in the cylinder at regular time intervals and plot your results on a graph. To investigate the rate of reaction by measuring change in mass, add the reactants to an open flask placed on a balance and cover the mouth of the flask with a piece of loosely packed cotton wool. The cotton wool allows gas to escape but prevents any liquids from being ejected. Because gas molecules are able to escape, as the reactant is consumed, the mass of the contents of the flask decreases. Mass is recorded at regular time intervals using a stopwatch and the results are plotted on a graph. Next, you need to interpret data, including graphs, from rate of reaction experiments. So plotting a graph to show the progress of a reaction allows us to see how the rate of reaction changes over time. The gradient of the line, which shows the rate of reaction, is always steepest at the start, as this is when most reactant particles are available to collide and form products. As the reaction progresses, the concentration of reactants decreases, and so the rate of reaction slows. This is indicated by a decrease in the gradient of the line. Eventually, at least one of the reactants is completely used up. This is referred to as the limiting reactant. The rate of reaction at this point is zero, so the gradient of the line is horizontal. Now plotting multiple data sets on the same graph allows us to see how changing a variable like temperature or the concentration of a solution influences the rate of reaction. For example, this graph shows the effect of changing the surface area of a solid reactant. The gradient of the yellow line is steeper at the start and becomes horizontal sooner, indicating a faster rate of reaction. Note that the total amount of product at the end of the reaction is the same in both trials because the same amount of reactants were used. 
if we were to conduct another trial with half the amount of reactants, the amount of products formed would also be half, regardless of the reaction rate. Okay, that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section. Collision theory is a principle of chemistry that helps us to explain why reactions occur at different rates. According to the theory, reactant particles must collide if they're to react. In addition, the collision must have sufficient energy, that is, enough energy to break bonds in the reactants. As we learned in topic 5.1, the minimum energy that colliding particles must have is known as the activation energy. Now, there are two types of collisions. Successful collisions result in the formation of products, and unsuccessful collisions do not. If colliding particles have energy that is equal to or greater than the activation energy, then the collision is successful. If, however, the energy of the particles is less than the activation energy, then the collision is unsuccessful and the particles remain unchanged. The rate of a chemical reaction depends on the frequency of successful collisions, that is, the number of successful collisions in a given unit of time. The frequency of successful collisions depends on four factors. Number one is the frequency of collisions between particles. Because a certain proportion of collisions are always successful, a greater number of collisions in a given unit of time will also result in a greater number of successful collisions. Number two is number of particles per unit volume. So more particles in a given volume will result in more frequent collisions and therefore more frequent successful collisions. Number three is the kinetic energy of the particles. Greater kinetic energy means that A, collisions will be more frequent because particles are moving faster, and B, more of these collisions will be successful because more particles have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. Number four is activation energy. If the activation energy of a reaction is higher, a smaller proportion of collisions will be successful because fewer particles will have energy that exceeds the activation energy. Collision theory can help to explain why the factors we looked at earlier affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So increasing the concentration of a solution means that there are more reactant particles in a given volume. This increases the frequency of collisions and successful collisions between particles, leading to an increased rate of reaction. Increasing the pressure of a gas forces particles closer together so that the same number of particles occupy a smaller volume. This increases the frequency of collisions and successful collisions between particles, leading to an increased rate of reaction. Increasing the surface area of a solid, for example using powder instead of granules, exposes more particles to the other reactant. This increases the frequency of collisions and successful collisions between particles, leading to an increased rate of reaction. Increasing temperature provides particles with more kinetic energy, causing them to move faster and collide more frequently. In addition, a greater proportion of reactant particles have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. Both of these factors increase the frequency of successful collisions, leading to an increased rate of reaction. Finally, adding a catalyst decreases the activation energy of a reaction. This means that a greater proportion of reactant particles have energy greater than the activation energy, leading to an increase in the frequency of successful collisions and a faster rate of reaction. Reaction pathway diagrams show the effect of adding a catalyst. The diagram on the right depicts a catalyzed reaction, in which particles require much less energy to react. The catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway with a significantly lower activation energy. Finally, you need to evaluate practical methods for investigating the rate of a reaction. So the first method we looked at was gas collection using a gas syringe. Advantages of this method include, it works for all reactions that produce a gas, it's quick and easy to set up, all the gas produced from the reaction is collected due to the gas tight seal between the barrel and the chamber, and the syringe has a precise scale, allowing for accurate measurements. Disadvantages of this method include some gas may be lost while connecting the bung to the flask, gas syringes are fragile, relatively expensive and prone to sticking, and they have a limited capacity, making them unsuitable for reactions that produce large volumes of gas. 
Advantages of gas collection using a measuring cylinder include it works for all reactions that produce a gas and it uses inexpensive and common laboratory equipment. However, gas may be lost while connecting the bung to the flask, improper handling of the measuring cylinder or delivery tube can result in gas leaks, and the scale may be obscured by gas bubbles, making it difficult to record volume. Finally, measuring change in mass using a balance and open flask. So this method is easy to set up and it uses inexpensive and common laboratory equipment. However, it's not suitable for reactions that produce gases like hydrogen, which has a very low relative molecular mass. This is because the loss in mass incurred may be too small to accurately measure. Well done, you just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 6.2, Rate of Reaction. If you benefited from this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon where I'll be uploading the entire chemistry syllabus. Join me there for our next lesson on topic 6.3, Reversible Reactions and Equilibrium.